The Home Health Quality Improvement National Campaign welcomes you to smoking cessation with your patients. This video is part of a series designed to improve patients' cardiovascular health. Some videos are designed to be shared with your patients as supplemental education, and others are intended as refreshers for clinicians on evidence-based practices. Do you have patients who smoke? Do you want to help them quit smoking? If your answer to both questions is yes, then this video is for you. In this clinician video, we will present information on how to introduce smoking cessation to your patients and provide some strategies to support your patients with smoking cessation. As a healthcare professional, you know that smoking has serious effects on your patients and their family's health. As a trusted member of your patient's healthcare team, you're in a perfect position to provide the information and support they need to quit smoking. If you are a smoker, perhaps the information in the video will assist you to make a decision to quit. One evidence-based behavioral counseling technique to get you started is the use of the five A's, which stands for ask about tobacco use, advise to quit, assess readiness to quit, assist with quitting, arrange follow-up counseling. The five A's do not happen over one or two visits. It's progressive. Share the smoking cessation status of patients with the healthcare team, including the physician, to create an interprofessional approach and maximize the team's effects. If time during your visit is limited, focus on ask, advise, and refer. Studies show that even two to three minutes of counseling can help a smoker quit. To learn more about the five A's and how to include them in your visits, read HHQI's Cardiovascular Health Part 2 Best Practice Intervention Package and listen to the Smoking Joe podcast on HHQI's website. Another way to discuss cardiovascular benefits of smoking cessation is to share the time frames of what happens after quitting. Provide a handout and explain to your patient that it actually doesn't take long to see the benefits of smoking cessation. These points are discussed in a short HHQI patient video, Smoking and Your Heart, that you may want to share with your patients and their families on another visit. Another strategy to try is using an importance and confidence scale to see how a patient feels about quitting. There is an action plan in the My Healthy Heart Workbook on the HHQI website. Ask your patients how important it is to them to quit smoking. Using the ruler or a 1 to 10 scale, determine where they are right now. 1 means totally unimportant and 10 means extremely important. Praise them for thinking that quitting is important even if the rate is not high. Follow up and ask why they picked that number. Most importantly, ask them what it would take to move that number up to a 10. Repeat with the confidence ruler. How confident is your patient that he or she could quit right now? This will provide you with valuable information to assist your patient to develop their quit plan. Remember that studies show even two to three minutes of counseling can help a smoker move toward quitting. Can you squeeze two minutes into a visit? Look for opportunities during each visit, such as during the OASIS. While screening for health risk factors that include smoking, ask for details on smoking history and then discuss it on follow-up visits. If your patient has wheezes or is short of breath during your pulmonary assessment, explain how smoking affects the lungs. Advise your patient that you are a resource to help them quit. When teaching disease management, connect the effects of smoking to your patient's disease. Talk to non-diabetic patients about the heightened risk for developing diabetes if he or she is a smoker. The CDC reports 30 to 40 percent more likelihood for smokers to develop type 2 diabetes. Patients already diagnosed with diabetes who are smokers are at a higher risk of developing cardiovascular disease. Another teaching opportunity is that smokers are more likely to have difficulty with insulin dosing and managing their diabetes. Remind patients who have pulmonary diseases, diabetes, or wounds that smoking will impair wound healing. Tie in smoking education related to those specific needs during your disease management education. 
When reviewing the patient's heart or blood pressure medications, introduce or remind them that there are medications that can help one to stop smoking. There are different kinds of medications to assist with quitting. The more you practice smoking cessation education and support, the more natural it will feel. If you are a former smoker, share your experiences with your colleagues and patients. This may help non-smokers empathize and understand how difficult it may be for someone to quit smoking. Also, learn more about smoking cessation. The Home Health Quality Improvement Campaign offers many tools and resources for clinicians and patients on our website, including the Fundamental Focus Blood Pressure Control and Smoking Cessation Best Practice Intervention Package. There is a course in the HHQI University on Cardiovascular Health Lifestyle Management Smoking Cessation. The content includes pathophysiology of tobacco smoke and cardiovascular effects, as well as some of the smoking cessation medications actions, dosing, side effects, and more. You can make a difference in a person's life by asking, advising, assessing, assisting, and arranging referrals for patients who want to quit smoking. Thank you for watching Smoking Cessation with your patients. We hope that you were able to brush up on the evidence-based strategies that can assist your patients in improving their cardiovascular health.